depolarization, repolarization, hyperpolarization, it's all so complicated. No, it isn't. By the end of this video, you're gonna understand the action potential. So let's do it. Hey, this is Leslie Samuel here from Interactive Biology, where we're making biology fun, and let's get into the action potential. Now, to understand what causes the action potential to happen, you first have to understand what's happening in the neuron at rest. First off, here we have a neuron. There are a few main parts to the neuron. We have the dendrites, the cell body, AKA the soma, the axon, the axon terminals, and yeah, we can get more detailed, but let's stick with that for now. Now, the action potential happens in the axon. So let's look a little more closely at it. When a neuron is at rest, you have a few things happening. First thing, the membrane potential, that's the charge across the membrane, that's at negative 70 millivolts. And at rest, we have sodium ions more concentrated outside the axon, and potassium ions are found more inside the axon. Why exactly that's the case is important to understand, but that's for another video. Sodium outside, potassium inside, that's the key. Sweet. Okay, let's say this neuron is stimulated by another neuron. That causes an increase in the membrane potential. You might get a, a little bump in the membrane potential. Now, if that stimulus is large enough so that the membrane potential will reach what's called the threshold potential, then we get an action potential. That's the key. We need a big enough stimulus. And the place this starts is called the axon hillock. That's the part of the neuron where the axon starts. Once we reach the threshold potential, voltage-gated sodium channels are gonna open. Now, we said that sodium is concentrated outside the cell. So what's gonna happen when those channels open? Well, since they only allow sodium ions to pass through, sodium ions are gonna start to rush into the cell. Sodium ions have a positive charge, so as they start rushing in, the membrane potential is gonna get more and more positive. This phase is called depolarization. It's where the membrane potential is getting more positive. But there's another fact that you need to know. The equilibrium potential for sodium is positive 58 millivolts. That's the membrane potential where sodium is kind of balanced. Now that's a simplified explanation, but it'll work for now. This is where sodium wants the membrane potential to be. So it's basically rushing trying to get into the cell to get that membrane potential to positive 58. But it doesn't quite reach there because at this point, the membrane potential is high enough to cause voltage-gated potassium channels to open. Now here's the thing. The equilibrium potential for potassium is negative 93 millivolts. And if you remember from what I said before, potassium is more concentrated inside the cell. So what's gonna happen? Well, how do we get to that negative value? Well, potassium is gonna seize the opportunity to leave the cell. Potassium is also positively charged, so as the positive ions start flying out of the axon, the membrane potential is gonna go back down, and this is called repolarization. Now, remember, potassium is trying to get to its equilibrium potential, and that's a pretty low number. So it's gonna shoot past that negative 70 millivolts, and once it passes that resting membrane potential, it's now in a stage called hyperpolarization. Now, here's how I personally remember this. I always think of polarized as being the negative resting state. Now, that's not technically true, but it helps me to remember. Here's how. Depolarization makes it less negative Repolarization brings it back to that negative resting state. And hyperpolarized means that it's even more negative than the normal resting state. It's kind of overpolarized. Now remember, don't use that as a definition because it's not, but it helps me to remember and it might help you as well. Depolarize, less negative, Repolarize is becoming back that negative resting membrane potential and hyperpolarize, it's over negative, if that makes any sense. Okay, last step. We said that the potassium is trying to get to its equilibrium potential uh, by leaving the cell and that number is negative 93 millivolts. But we never actually get there because as the membrane potential gets lower, the voltage gated potassium channels are gonna start to close. And once they are closed in this hyperpolarized state, the factors that are responsible responsible for establishing the resting membrane potential do what they do and the resting membrane potential gets restored. Now this has to do with things like the 
presence of passive ion channels in the membrane, the sodium-potassium pump helping to redistribute sodium and potassium, and other factors. The key thing is this. Resting membrane potential is restored, and now the action potential is complete. So there you have it. That's an overview of what's happening during an action potential. Now, of course, there are many more details that we can get into about the different stages of the action potential. And if there's some aspect of it that you'd like me to dig deeper into, go ahead and let me know in the comments below. But my name is Leslie Samuel from Interactive Biology, where we're making biology fun. That's it for this video, and I'll see you in the next one. Peace.